Hey everybody, in this video we're going to make a custom ability task. This is something that will allow for more know, custom events to wait for. The Action RPG example project shows a custom one that they made, and we're going to make one for ourselves because, if we look here, in the previous video we have this wait gameplay event, right? And it only fires when this weapon.hit event is received. And we had the problem of if we missed the punch, we didn't get an event. So what we did is we sent an empty payload with a weapon.hit here, um, which is identical to weapon.hit over here with a full payload. That works, but it's not accurate. I, I don't quite like that. I would rather be able to send a weapon no hit event over so that we know that the event has failed rather than just sending a success without with an empty payload. So we're going to make a custom uh, a custom task here that has two execution potentials as well as multiple event tags that it's listening for. Here we go. Okay, what we need to do is make a new C++ class, go to all classes, and we're looking for ability task. This parent one right here. We're going to hit next. We're going to call it ability task underscore success fail event. We'll put it under public, core, and abilities. Go ahead and create. So here we are. We have our pretty empty ability task inheriting from our ability task and the easy way to do this is just build off of what already exists that we know we want so what we're gonna do if you're using Rider or I think other IDEs have the same feature we're gonna search for ability task and it should find the folder in the engine where these exist and what we want to look for is this wait gameplay event because this is what we were using previously. Hit control B if you're using Rider to get the header file. All right. So here we are. This is that gameplay event where we're waiting for a tag to receive. And we just need to basically copy this and then modify a little bit so that we have two tags that we're waiting for. So let's go ahead and just grab all this, copy, and go over to our header and paste it in here. We are also going to want to grab this forward declaration as well as this dynamic multicast delicate. Put that at the top. We're gonna rename this to our success fail event here. And we're gonna rename this function here to wait success fail event. So let's take a look through the wait gameplay event as it exists already. So this function has the hide pin owning ability and it defaults to the self the owning ability. So this is just defaulting to the ability um, that's gonna hide that. And we're bringing in a tag, that's the tag we're setting. So it was weapon.hit. And we're bringing in an optional external target, that's optional. And Let's see, we have a bool for our trigger once, and we have a bool for our only match exact. And then we return the object. Ability tasks have some other functions, such as the activate override right here. And if we look at that, that fires off when this async task is activated. So we're creating an ability system component pointer. We're getting the target ASC, that pointer for the ability system component. If our ability system component is pointing to memory, we come inside here and we're checking this boolean for only match exact. Uh, if that is so, we fire this off, if not here. And what we're doing is we're setting a delegate handle to run this um, ga uh, generic gameplay event callback or add gameplay event container delegate. And what these are doing is kind of complicated. You can go ahead and dive in and read it if you want, but essentially we're binding the callbacks here. We're making this handle uh, point to what we want it to do if we receive it back. So if we have only match exact, we're taking our tag and we're adding it or finding it, find or add, 
in our generic gameplay event callback, so we're seeing if this tag exists or not, and if it doesn't, we're adding it in there so that it's listening for this tag. And then we are adding a U object of this ability task, and we are binding the address of our gameplay event callback function, which we can see down here. If not, we're calling a different function of add gameplay event tag container delegate. So we're creating an F gameplay tag container struct by sending in the tag. So that would be weapon dot hit. We're creating a U object with this as the object and then the address to the container callback. And that's what these are. So we have a gameplay event callback and a gameplay event container callback. The gameplay event callback, which is called from the exact match, takes in the payload and sends the tag, which was stored up here on the wait gameplay event when we created it, so weapon.hit, and then passes the payload over. When it calls that, so the tag's coming in, the payload comes in. So if this returns true and we should broadcast on this delegate, we're going to create a temporary payload of gameplay event data, and we're going to copy over this uh, the pointer to that payload, and then we're going to store the matching tag in that event tag, which is in that struct. And then we're going to broadcast on this delegate the reference to that temporary payload. Next, we're going to check if only trigger once was uh, was uh, true, and if so, we're going to end the task. Next, we have uh, the helper functions here, such as get target ASC, which we saw up here, to get an ability system component. If uh, the a use external target bool was true, we're bringing in the optional external target that would be sent into the task, the blueprint. Otherwise, we're just returning the ability system component, which is attached to this ability task um, via the, the parent class of uAbility task. Next we have our cleanup, our on destroy, which is just destroying um, and getting rid of our event callbacks and cleaning all of that up. The set external target function right here is called up in this event, so here. This is where we're bringing in that A actor for the external target and we're checking if it's true, and then we're checking our boolean, and we're setting up the optional external targets uh, ability system component so that we have it here for get ASC. Okay, so that's uh, pretty much the code for how to wait for a gameplay event. We just need to add in a second delegate for a failure, and then duplicate this code so that we have two branches to go off of. So first, let's go ahead and create definitions for all this stuff. So we need to change some things here, such as we're going to make this into... We're going to rename this as success fail event delegate. Copy and paste that there. And this is going to be the success event received. And then we're going to duplicate and make a failed event received. We need to copy and paste that macro spaces so this is easy to read. So now we've got two delegates here. Same thing down here. We need to have a success tag and we need to have a failed tag and then this delegate needs to be the success handle and the failed handle. We're going to rename this as the success event callback and this will be the success event container callback, duplicate, and this will be the failed event callback, and duplicate, and this will be the failed event container callback. Now we can go ahead and make these definitions. Okay, so for this wait success fail event right here, we're bringing in an event tag, we're going to call this the success tag, and then we're going to add in another parameter here called f gameplay tag failed tag. We're going to copy that over to the implementations here. Rename this to success tag. Okay. And then we're going to copy this code here and stick it in here. This is going to be success tag and my object success tag. 
make sure rename this and this and then my obj failed tag is equal to failed tag coming in okay pretty much identical we just added a new tag let's go ahead and grab this activate and stick it under activate get rid of that duplicate super call now we're going to call this the success handle make sure we include the definition above for ability system component let's go ahead and set up the get target asc so this stops squiggling we just copy that and stick it in there so i'm just going through basically and kind of modifying so the success tag is being sent to here this needs to be renamed this needs to be renamed this needs to be the success handle and we need to put success tag as well whoops there and this is going to be the container success event container callback and this needs to be the success event callback okay i don't know why there's a red squiggly here something hasn't caught up just ignore it for now we now need to basically double this with the failed so we just copy and put this here and this is the failed handle and the failed tag and the failed event callback same thing copy this and duplicate and this is going to be the failed handle the failed tag and the failed event container callback so there we go, we are binding our success handles and our failed handles properly into the system. We now have two returning potentials. Now we need to actually do the events here, uh, which is again, we're just gonna copy and paste. So let's go ahead and grab, here we go, event callback handle. We just grab that and put it here. Uh, make sure that this is that and then change tag here to success tag because we're going to the success event now in the success event container callback we're just going to grab this code and paste it in here we want to do success event received delegate and broadcast on that all right so we just need to do the same thing in the event failed we're sending the failed tag and we're calling the failed event container callback and we copy this and put it in here and we need to make sure that this is the failed event received broadcast last but not least we need to get this set external target code which is just that and put in here make sure that we include the proper things for our ability system globals up at the top and on destroy let's not forget that just grab this and before we do the super call we run all that this needs to be the success handle so we're just going to do this is the success tag this is the success handle success tag success handle and then we're just going to copy paste and do the same thing for our failed handle and our failed tag so we're just cleaning up both tags and both handles here and I'm gonna go ahead and change the comment here so that it matches what we're doing wait until the specified gameplay tag is a events trigger that allows success or failure we'll call this a custom ability task which uses a success or fail tag to decide between two branches. So I see what happened. Um, Ryder lowercased this, and that should be all uppercase, so that's why that red squiggly was there. Okay, one last thing, uh, because it was failing to build, it appears that it does want a constructor. 
So go ahead and copy one over, rename it, and then build again. All right, now we're in the editor. Let's go to our punch ability. And we're going to swap this weight gameplay event out, and we should have weight success fail event. And there we go. There's our new one. So if we put the that pin there, we got to make a new variable because this one is a different sync task. So delete that and promote this to a variable. And then attach it back over here. Move this pin to here, move the event. This is the success path here, so that goes there. And then the payload goes right there. We can get rid of that guy, move this up. All right, success tag is a hit. And the failed tag, we're gonna make a new gameplay tag called weapon.nohit. And that's the failed one. We're gonna only trigger once. Event failed received, we're just going to end ability. Back in the base character, right here, send gameplay event to actor, we're going to instead do a no hit. Compile and save. Let's open it up. And there we go. We can test that by doing a print here. So this is our success. Put it here. And we'll print and do a failed. And print that out. Come back over. Let's hit play. And you can see up in the corner, failed and success. So there you go. That's how to roughly write your own ability tasks. There's a lot more different ability tasks to take a look at. They all do different things and you just kind of play around, copy and paste and modify the code until it does something that you want it to do. Uh, we're going to do the network replication next time, I believe. See ya.